This is from Obutech, and this is a 1500 watt inverter, as well as a iPhone charger, a USB-C, USB charger. It's got a couple wires here. I don't know the gauge of these wires. They feel like a little bit less than six gauge. One of the neat things about this is it's gonna have a ground wire, which I'm gonna incorporate into my electrical system. It's gonna have a USB, looks like a micro cable. That's for the remote uh, switch that you'll see in the remote monitoring. It's gonna have a wireless remote connector here. So this is gonna plug in and make the remote completely wireless so you can put it wherever you want. It's going to have a little tiny cover plate, it looks like, or a sticky plate. Um, it is going to have these extra fuses, and you're going, why do you need five? And it looks like they are 50 amp fuses on this. Well, this is the reverse polarity protection. So if you hook this up backwards for whatever reason, that's going to bl blow the fuses that are already inside of it. So that's going to blow those fuses, and th those are not normally needed unless something's gone very, very wrong. There is this connector here, so it's going to have a wire for the wireless remote uh, monitoring station. So this little tiny wireless remote can turn the unit on and on and show you the voltage, show you everything about it, and it's very easy to use. If you want to run it wired, you just plug it in the bottom and plug it into the unit, but the fact that this thing charges up in about an hour they said and it lasts for an entire month to run completely wirelessly which is awesome this is the instructions on how the remote control works so it's going to tell you all about the remote control this is the 1500 watt inverter and i'm going to go give you the peel there so there's the peel to the digital display that it has there um, I noticed that this is kind of like almost silk screened. There's a little bit of an imperfection here. So like as far as fit and finish, the outside is not as super fancy as some of your other inverter companies probably would be. Like I said, the manual is actually really good. Now it's gonna talk about the difference between pure sine wave and modified sine. If you're doing any sort of sensitive electronics, stay away from the modified sine wave if you can. If you're worried about your items and you don't want them to accidentally blow up, <laughs> <laughs> you can always go with a better, higher quality, pure sine wave unit. To run this, you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need those cables. You're also gonna need a battery for this to plug into. Now, another thing that it doesn't have here is it doesn't have any sort of overcurrent protection. So to protect the wires in case of a situation where something may have gotten pinched or is not set up right, there's nothing in here that would prevent it from overloading. So I'm a little worried about that. Uh, I've seen the other inverters come with an ANL fuse, which is kind of nice. Even if you don't use it and you have your own system, it's a really good idea. Um, another thing that's kind of a nitpicky complaint, that two terminals right here that I'm about to hook to a very large cable and could potentially hit each other, um, I wish that they were further apart. If there was any way to move the fans, ventilation, whatever, get these to be different corners, but being right next to each other, I think there's too much of an opportunity for things to get bundled up or pushed together incorrectly. So that's another nitpicky thing. Let's take a look at the front side of it. You can just see what we've got available here. This is that ground terminal. You've got four complete outlets. They're not GFCI protected from what I can see. Uh, some of the nicer inverters will have that. It does have two of the quick charge 3.0 ports and a power delivery 30 watt port there, which I thought was kind of cool. And then it's gonna have that connector for the remote. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the hotline over here, but this should be able to run a significant appliance. So 1500 watts is pretty much any microwave. So we've got a little bit of a spark out of that one, as you saw, that's normal. That's the capacitors filling up. Now there are ways that you can avoid that. You can actually put a resistor in there and fill the capacitor slowly and do other stuff, but we've actually connected it. It's ready to go. There's a couple things when you're turning it on. There's two ways to turn it on. You can turn it on directly from the unit by hitting the button. You can turn it on with the wireless remote. So if I plug this remote in and I press the button here on the wireless remote, what you're gonna notice is it comes up with zeros. Now, if I hold this down for two seconds, it will actually pull this up and I can actually press it down again and I can see that the remote control itself is fully charged. Now that, when you push it down again, real quickly, that's just gonna tell you that the remote has four volts of power, it's got a full gauge. Now, if you come back to the main here, it says my battery is at 12.6, so about 75% charge on the main battery. 
and it's already outputting 120, 119 at 60 hertz. Now, I can shut it off by holding this button down, and it's actually turning the inverter off. You'll see that the output's dropped to zero, and we're gonna verify all this. So this says that it has 1500 watts of capacity. So the inverter right now, I've got this set up. Um, when I turn this on, I want you to see what this does. So I'm gonna turn the inverter on and watch the waveform. I gotta stretch this out. And you're gonna see that it is actually a pure sine wave, which is awesome. So that's what we were exactly looking for is I wanted a higher quality inverter that had that pure sine wave. So just like they were showing off in their manual, they are putting out a pure sine wave. It's actually a cleaner sine wave than my own house puts out. But one thing I noticed, it'll actually start with zero volts and you're gonna see that it starts to scale up just like that. So it's actually starting and it takes about a second and a half for it to go from zero to 120 volts. That may or may not be good for certain electronics. I would rather this thing start it up and then turn the output on. So if you've got this hooked up, you may wanna consider having it on a switch uh, for the output so that you could turn the output on to the, the inverter. You wouldn't have a load plugged into it. So we're seeing that that pretty sine wave, even when you're changing the amount of load against it, it didn't change. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the first level of heat. That's gonna draw 100, 200, should be about 700 watts. So that's drawing 600 watts. Now I'm feeling heat, this inverter's already putting it out. The fan on the inverter is not normally on, but it just kicked on, we're at 980 watts. I'm gonna cross check that using our I've got a DC clamp meter. Now I'm getting, I'm feeling the warmth out of this. I'm gonna go ahead and check that that is uh, how much amperage it's pulling out. So it is pulling 90 amps out of these cables right now. So again, I don't think those cables are especially large. We're not at the full load yet, but it is getting 11.2 volts. It's pulling about, oh, a oh, thousand watts out of it. Now the fan is not obnoxiously loud. This is definitely putting out heat. Our battery is down to 10.7 though, and we're pulling 140 amps. Now it's dropping a little bit. So it is holding 1500 watts. It, it peaked up there over 1600, and it's pulling 137 continuous. Did handle that. The fans already turned off on this. It went over the amount. So I have to say that is a successful test of the Obutech pure sine wave inverter. We got a thousand watts out of it and then we bumped that up to the 1500 watt max. We went about 1600 watts.